Hi, my name is Leonardo and welcome to I Love Whiskey. Now, today's episode is about Pisco Sour. And unfortunately, I don't have the proper glass, but I have the glass that most bars get away with using, which is a martini or uh, what's it called, cocktail glass. So we'll just do with that. Now, before you even start commenting a lot of negative stuff about that I will not make the proper Pisco Sour, let's get one, straight, one thing straight from the beginning. There are mainly two Pisco Sours, and this is a long discussion who did the right one, who did the wrong one, who was first, who was not first. Okay, let's take it up from the top of the politics. Officially, the Pisco Sour is from Chile legal-wise. However, the city Pisco is from Peru. Where you stand, I really don't care. I'm Chilean. But that doesn't mean I really think so much about it. For me, they're from both countries. It's a long history, end of story. If you think that you're right, go ahead. I will make another version that's not even the Chilean or the Peruvian anyway, so I don't care. Because this channel is about one thing and one thing only. That's whiskey. Now, I want to take you back, and this is the version I'm going to do, if you can see it here. And there are some things where I will comment where the differences are and um, where I got my inspiration. Now this is way back before I even started behind the bar or behind anywhere to do cocktails. My grandfather, he was a very, uh, I would say, uh, he, he liked to party a lot, even in his old days. And uh, when he was very old, he, uh, and I visited his home, he made me pisco sour with whiskey. And that's how I got inspired to do this one. Now, it was different. He didn't have the knowledge of whiskey that I have. He just liked, in general, alcohol. But most importantly, he loves whiskey as well. But in Chile, whiskey is not a big thing. Like a big brand is like Chivas Vugal, and not the 18 or the Royale version, but the 12. That's, that's a big thing to have in your home. Now, when it comes to that, he of course made it with Chivas 12 years old. Now, I'm not gonna do that because I'm thinking more like how can I get the inspiration from the Pisco and how can I get these two alcohols to mix very well. And the one thing you don't want to do is don't want to do a whiskey sour because that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking to do a Pisco sour that still has a strong influence by the whiskey but not over dominates it but they kind of embrace each other and they build something bigger. That being said, so I'm actually very excited. Uh, first of all, of course, since I'm Chilean, I don't have Peruvian Pisco. Not that it's bad again, but I just have more access to Chilean uh, Pisco. Especially when I'm not living in South America, but in Europe. So uh, I will be using, what's this one? Uh, Pisco Mistral Nobel. Yeah. First yellow. Just to be, please explain her what color this is. <laughs> this is yellow. This more yellow. All right. So back dark to the train. When we have pisco sour, um, again, this in the discussion, we improve the used limes, as I'm told. But in Chile, we use lemons. And if you, uh, depending on who you ask, they said something else. But we'll be using, just for the sake of discussion here, we'll be using lemon juice. You could go for lime juice. But actually, if you ask me, I think, again, depending on the lemons and all that, that without doubt, lemon fits Pisco better than uh, lime. That's my personal... Uh, yeah, my personal... Uh, no, okay, my personal opinion. With, other than that, I will use uh, sugar water. I saw a lot of Peruvians, they actually don't shake the drink, they blend it. I shake it, and that's how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna use lemon juice, I'm gonna use some sugar water, and I brought this bottle just for conversation, because I'm not gonna use it, but I know it's very common to use in, uh, in Europe, to use Angostura bitters. I'm not gonna do that, because I didn't grow up with that, and. I really don't want to use it because I don't want to remove the focus from the whiskey and the pisco. You have a lot on your mind today. 
Last thing, of course, what whiskey they choose. I chose, and I hope you can still get it in your country, but I chose Macallan Amber. Now, this series has been discontinued, sadly, uh, because of, uh, well, a lot of people, they think that not age, age statements are bad whiskeys, but they're not. And this is actually a tragedy that that kind of disappeared from the market, the entire series, I mean, because this was great. The next one, which is Sierra, was even better, like <laughs> really value for your money. And not let's forget the Ruby. That was amazing, especially for the price. But yeah, that's what you get when you only think about numbers. So I'll be using this. So what measurements will be using? That's the interesting part. So let's start. And today, actually, I changed a bit my routine. This time, I'm actually working with the free part share, so you can actually see it. So, and sometimes, or actually a lot of times, I could ask, what should I start with? Should I start with ice or not? I would say if you work in a professional bar, don't start with ice because you don't want to dilute stuff. If you're doing it at home, then don't think about it. Focus more about getting the ingredients right because you're not like charging a hundred and uh, okay, what, what value do I say? No, you're not charging like 10 euros or even uh, what would it be like $15 per drink. So when you're not charging these amounts for drink, don't think about it. Get more into what you're serving and the right amounts and shake it enough, but not too much. So we start with the Pisco. Now, this is where the first controversy starts. I'm going to use two and a half. And I got this beautiful thing that they use in Latin America where they make it so you can't put anything on it here. So you can't put any pores. So you got this cheap plastic stuff. Love it. I actually hate it. So yeah, they got that one because this is directly from Chile. Um, so that was two and a half of Pisco. Now my next step requires a special kind of whiskey because if you pour this amount in this drink, you will kill the flavor of the pisco. So that's why you have to think really hard what, what whiskey you use. So I'm gonna use, believe it or not, three and a half seals of whiskey. And this works because it's Macallan and it's this one, Amber. It's got the right sweetness, it's got the right notes, got that, especially that sherry notes, really binds very well with this Pisco. And I had some ideas also, I even considered um, an apple hour, not the 12 or the 16, but one of the other ones, um, you may know it, and this is a Easter egg maybe. Uh, one that you may know has been in the Oloroso cask. I'll leave that one for the nerds. Next step, uh, lemon juice. Three CLs, and as I always say, remember, if you are not a CL person, just look at the description, you'll see the ounces. And next, and this depends a bit on the sourness of the lemon juice, but I think you, in most cases you will go correct with this, it will be two and a half of sugar water. Now this is very thick sugar water, so you know, so it's extra sweet. So that's why you don't want to go for three seals. Now I got almost all my ingredients. We just need the egg. Now you would need only half the egg white or half the egg white from one egg. That should be enough. If you really want to go for that extra foam, you can give it one egg, definitely. Next part, of course, is just to shake it really hard and we should get the right result. So if you're ready, go ahead and let's shake. This is the time we dance. No? I'm ready. Okay. Now the great thing about 
the free part shaker is that if you have problems opening, you can just use this small lid here and you should be ready to pour. Now, the only thing now with this is that you need to taste it first. But this time, you'll get actually uh, the possibility to taste it after I serve it, which you should never do at home. But I'm just doing it because I'm really lazy right now. So I'm gonna pour it, and you will see that this one has some brown stuff on the top. And I'm gonna leave that as optional. The reason you have this brown stuff, and this brown stuff is actually called something, of course, it's cinnamon. It's because in Chile, they add cinnamon on the top. I've been told that the Peruvian doesn't. So here we go, we serve. Here we have our pisco sour. And when you let it rest a bit, you will actually get more foam. Now, one thing that's very important in this drink is the egg. If you don't have egg, you just don't get that thick and really complex flavor. It kind of combines everything very well together. So all these things need that egg. It's important. Plus, it's part of your breakfast. So that's all for now in this video. Uh, if you like the video, please uh, hit the subscribe button if you already haven't. And also, of course, like it. And please comment which cocktail you would like me to make that is not whiskey based, but turn it into a whiskey cocktail. Thank you for now. This is Leonardo from I Love Whiskey. Bye.